Welcome to this series of presentations on LXI. If you're new to LXI, I suggest you watch the presentation connecting to LXI first, for that focuses on a single LXI device connected to LAN. This video focuses on connecting multiple LXI devices together to form a test system. Content is taken from the document Building LXI-Based Test Systems, as found on the LXI Consortium website. Since 2004, over 3,600 instruments have become LXI conformant. All manner of shapes and sizes, LXI box instruments, LXI to PXI modules, LXI to VXI modules. All LXI devices connect or behave the same when connected to LAN. All LXI devices include an IVI driver for quick programming. And most LXI devices have web page monitoring and control, so you can monitor and debug your test programs. Building a test system hardly gets better. LXI expands test system access. You'd love to be working in your cubicle while your test systems are way over there and possibly even in a noisy environment. Well, you can remote log in to your test system PC, and you can organize all your devices on an isolated private subnet. The IVI drivers that come standard with an LXI device provide quick and easy access to the device's functionality. And with web page monitoring and control, you can figure out what's going wrong in your test system simply by pausing your program looking at a web page showing the signal, for example, on a scope, and then analyzing the web page associated with switching to find out you closed the wrong switch. In the presentation connecting with LXI, we added a LAN switch to our cubicle and connected our computer and a single LXI device to make a connection to the company LAN network. But a test system consists of multiple LXI devices. Is it as simple as adding more LXI devices to this LAN switch? Well, that's one possible configuration. Are there others? So this presentation will focus on how to get ready for this situation, picking a LAN configuration, and how you would control multiple devices. Things like performance and security We'll leave for another presentation. With LAN, there are multiple configurations to choose. Configuration A is what we were just talking about, where we simply added more LXI devices to this LAN switch, which connects everybody to the company LAN network. This gives easy access to test system developers but it gives access to other people on the LAN as well, which could interfere with the test system. Configuration B is quite a bit better. You have a LAN router, which creates a firewall between the company LAN and the devices behind the firewall in this sub private subnet. Computer has easy access to these devices, but the computer also has easy access to the company LAN. And an extension of B is simply configuration D, where we add a wireless router, which gives us access to remote devices that might be in line of sight. Configuration C is really what we want to focus on. It's the recommended configuration for a, uh, an LXI-based test system. So what would you need to get a system like this started? Well, you need a computer with two LAN ports or two LAN network interface cards. You need a switch with plenty of access for multiple devices, lots of LAN cables, of course your LXI devices, but you typically need the Visa I.O. library to actually program these devices from your computer. And to discover what devices are actually a part of your network, you'd use the LXI discovery tool.
This configuration was covered in connecting with LXI presentation. It is simple. You simply plug the device into the company's LAN and the DHCP server gives it an IP address. Unfortunately, that IP address could be anything. You can discover it with tools from the Visa I.O. library or using the LXI discovery tool. However, when connected to the company's LAN, those tools will also discover every other LXI device. Getting back to configuration C, we've isolated the LXI devices from the company LAN. We have also isolated ourselves from the DHCP server, which was automatically assigning us IP addresses. However, the LXI specification requires that devices connected will drop into auto IP when no DHCP server is discovered. Auto IP assigns somewhat arbitrary IP addresses in the 169.254 range. For this configuration, most LXI devices would want to assign fixed or static IP addresses to each LXI device. But how would we do that? If you bring up the network connections on your PC, you will find information on all the LAN interfaces available to the computer. NIC number one is connected to the company LAN and has access to the internet. Network interface card number two drops into the, to, into the auto IP range of addresses just like the LXI devices did. To change the IP address of NIC number two, select the local area connection link. Here you have a series of boxes that get you through the various properties of the IPv4 uh, protocol down to the point where you could deselect DHCP, which was either picking up the DHCP server or dropping into auto IP mode, and actually create a static IP address. In this case, we're going to assign the NIC number 2 address to 10.1.1.1 and give it a subnet mass. We don't need a default gateway because we don't plan on passing anything up to any other ne network interface card and up to the uh, internet. The LXI discovery tool was talked about in connecting with LXI. It can be used to only search on a particular LAN interface, uh, and NIC number two uh, in particular. If you use the advanced menu, you can gain access to actually selecting which interface you'd like to search. So once all the LXI devices are found, you can bring up each of the LXI devices welcome page. Notice that when we discovered these devices, they all fell into the 169.254 address range. Here's an example of the welcome page. Uh, for a particular LXI device. Off to the side here, we have the, an icon pointing towards web monitoring and control. Uh, you've got the Visa string down below, which you can use later for programming this particular device. And you've got something over here called Identify. Because if you have multiple LXI devices that are all the same model number, you can press this ID button and an indicator will flash on that device, either on the screen or as a blinking LED, so you can identify which device you're actually talking to. But LAN configure is really where we want to be headed here in order to change the IP address of this LXI device. The LXI device is shipped, uh, configured for automatic or DHCP. To make the device's address static, you choose the manual control on this configuration web page. Notice that the gateway's NIC address number two is placed as the default gateway access uh, back to the interface card. So in this particular case, we've given this an IP address of 10.1.1 and subnet mask of 255, pretty much the same as the uh, network interface card. So if you pre repeat the previous operation on each LXI device, the results will be that all of the LXI devices are on the same subnet 
as NIC number two, and they will be using static and easy to document IP addresses. Now it's time to install the real software, that is the means to which you can develop and control these instruments. Two of the top choices for the I.O. library called Visa are Keysight Technologies and National Instruments. Those companies also include LXI discovery tools for discovering LAN, and, but they also can discover USB devices and GPI de interfaces and devices. Since every LXI device is required to supply an IVI driver, you have an easy means to programming your, ins your system instruments quickly. IVI drivers are all registered on the IVI Foundation website. So if you're putting together a system, you can find pointers to the driver software at the various vendors supplying your test equipment. The IVI Foundation maintains, maintains both the standards for Visa and IVI. Here's an example of using an IVI driver to communicate with an instrument. Note the Visa connection string uh, that, we, that was present on the welcome page of the LXI device. This string is passed into or passed onto the IVI driver, IVI driver initialization routine, which opens up an, a connection to the instrument. Once the connection is made, you can control the instrument. Note that the IVI driver, in cooperation with Visual Studio, provides IntelliSense off the driver handle and will also provide an object browser to identify all of the cap capabilities of the IVI driver. Well, you've learned a lot more about connecting multiple LXI devices into an LXI-based test system. You can learn much more detail accessing some of these listed documents on the LXI Consortium website. Also, there are two other presentations that cover additional system-related information, in particular on network security and performance. Thank you for your time.